So now I have this uh, nice set of 10 miniatures and I decided to start with Rose Salsifolia. It's a very nice uh, delicate rose for those who enjoy rosy perfumes with a little bit of a citrusy touch. That's how I would describe it. Cologne type fragrances are not my cup of tea, but ladies who like this kind of fragrances, they will really enjoy it. Santal Volcanique is kind of a citrusy, spicy perfume for me. I was quite surprised by the way it smells, because I'm a big lover of sandalwood, but this Santal has nothing to do with Santal. It smells like a cologne of my grandfather, but a kind of a modern, younger version of it. Another perfume that is cologne-like is Citrus Baticanda. I think I prefer this one because it's not pretending to be woody, it really is citrusy spicy. Spices here are a little bit different, there's more of pepper I would say rather than ginger, but you get the same kind of cardamom and the bitterness of citrusy skin. Asmante Kudoshan. This one did not attract my attention, so I'm gonna spray it once again to see. What makes it interesting is that this is a floral bouquet for men. In my imagination I have a picture of a young guy going on a date with his girlfriend to stroll on the beach at sunset. I think anise notes will blend very well with the sea breeze. Meanwhile I don't see this perfume to be very long lasting and I don't see more mature men wearing this. Absinthe Boreal this perfume attracts me just by its name, but the scent, it actually makes me think of gin straight with lemon, not of absinthe, although there are some fresh, airy, herbal, even vegetal notes in here. If I had a blind folder on and I had to match the names of the perfumes with the perfumes, I would say that this one is Santal Volcanique. But this one is Papyrus Moleculaire. Papyrus actually is a plant, but I don't know how it smells in nature. But I'll tell you what. From the very first approach, I recognized Santal 33 of another fragrance house, Le Labo. The thing is that this one is cheaper, but it smells really nice. So. This perfume is called Iris Malihon. And I don't know why it was named after Iris, because Iris is very, very hidden in here. When I smelled this perfume, I also had a déjà vu. I've smelled it somewhere before, but this one was not so easy to recognize. It is woody, leathery, and a little bit powdery, but more leathery rather than powdery. And that brings me to the perfume called Italian Leather of another Parisian house called Memo. Italian Leather by Memo. Both perfumes achieve sweet leatherly effect by a mix of vanilla and tomato leaves. And this is what I feel in here, despite that it's not a part of the description of Iris Malihan. While Iris Malihan would probably be one of my favorite perfumes, other flowers in the collection did not impress me so much. Uh, Lise Solenberg is an interesting perfume that has very contradictory reviews. And I'm not surprised why, because me, myself, I have changed my opinion about it several times. My first opinion about it was, wow, lovely. It's a very nice intake on lilies, because I do like lilies, but I'm very careful with the lily fragrances. And this one I enjoyed from the first sniff, but then it becomes kind of tricky. After a bit, I recognize amber, it's mixed with something sweet, but this is not really vanilla. For me, this is more like a raw cocoa powder, or maybe the sweetness also comes from dried apricots. I continue liking it when I start recognizing some tobacco notes, because that sweetness of dry fruits still makes it very pretty for me. But at one moment, I kind of get annoyed by this perfume, and I realize that this is because it's becoming more synthetic. It doesn't smell natural, it smells more like synthetic. For me, it's a kind of perfume that would turn my head. If there was a girl passing by, I would definitely turn around. But I could not wear this perfume myself for more than two hours. It started 
giving me a bit of a nauseous feeling or even a headache. Some people on Fragonatica comment that this perfume is leaning towards masculine side. Well, for me, this is a very feminine kind of lilies. Okay, maybe leaning a little bit towards unisex, but definitely not towards masculine side. Another perfume that I couldn't handle, it is also flowery, is called Fleur Diamantine. And the problem with this perfume, it smells a lot like soap. Lily of the Valley is not a part of the description in this perfume, but take a soap bar, Lily of the Valley, multiply its intensity by 10. Also add a little bit of jasmine and orange blossom. And this is what you get. It's kind of intense and very annoying to me. Another perfume that made me think of Mammal brand is Bois d'Achel. And the similarity here is not as close as Iris Malihan and Italian leather. The only reason that I thought of Memo, in this case it's uh, oh. African leather, is because it reminds me of a tiger bow. My interest in tea notes in fragrances is uh, quite recent. Meanwhile, I have been a lover of good tea for quite a long time. While I was hoping to recognize chai notes in here, Instead, I found the aromas of a tiger balm. What's interesting about this perfume is that the opening is very fresh and fruity. You get the wonderful bramble berries that are, they remind you a little bit of a chewing gum. But then you have mint and peppermint together, refreshing and even suppressing the berries. I don't know if blackberry tic tac exists, but if it did exist, uh, that would be something similar to this perfume. It's interesting that chai and tiger balm, they actually have several elements in common. For example, cardamom, cloves, cinnamon, pink pepper, black pepper. But what distinguishes tiger balm from chai is a lot of uh, minty oils and also comfort oil. Tiger balm does not use the same cinnamon. It uses cinnamonum cassia, which is a kind of Chinese cinnamon and it's not as aromatic as the cinnamon we're used to putting into our coffee and chai. If you don't know Tiger Balm, think of a massage oil or oil for arthritis. That's how it smells to me. So all these spices in this perfume, they make me qualify this perfume as a spicy rather than woody. The only woody association here is uh, bramble berries coming from the woods but I don't feel any oak, I don't feel any uh, trees in here. For me, it's really pharmaceutical. Maison Crivelli was an interesting journey. To be honest, I don't even know how to sum it up because all the fragrances are very different and they come from different creators since uh, Crivelli collaborates with different perfumers. Just categorize them. I would say you have these four cologne-like perfumes. Then there are flowery perfumes where you have uh, rose salsifolia as a very delicate fragrance and fleur diamantine as a very intense fragrance. Iris Malihan, for me this is not iris at all. These three perfumes I probably liked the most, but I cannot say that they are very unique to Maison Crivelli. These are the kind of fragrances that you would probably think that you have already smelled somewhere before, including Papyrus Moleculaire, which is practically identical to Santal 33.